Let's prepare on properties of fluids. So now we are going to continue with the properties of the fluid. So here there are two types of fluid in general. One is called ideal fluid and another one is called real fluid. Okay. So ideal fluid means it will be non-viscous and incompressible. And this is not at all possible. So it is just an imaginary fluid only. It does not exist. Okay. And real fluid means it possesses viscosity. It possesses compressibility and surface tension also. So all these viscosity, compressibility and surface tension. These are all is very very important. And the next is Newtonian fluids and non-Newtonian fluids. So this is also a classification of fluids. So here the fluids which obeys the Newtonian's law. So we have seen uh, the Newton's law of viscosity already. It is tau is proportional to du by dy. No? So when the fluid obeys this law, we call it as Newtonian fluid. And some examples are given here. Air, water, light, oils and gasoline are examples. And non-Newtonian means they do not obey the law. So here there is another equation for this non-Newtonian fluids. That is tau is equal to b plus a into du by dy the power n okay so here with respect to this we have several types of non-newtonian fluids so here are the types so here a graph is given with the x-axis du by dy and the y-axis tau okay so here we have this a b and n no so what are those means b is nothing but it is your yield shear stress so in this y-axis we'll be taking that yield shear stress and in the x-axis we have du by dy no so we consider a that which is equal to flow consistency index and n is nothing but the flow behavior index so here if you take this diagram First, let us see these three. Okay, if you take these three, here B will be zero. Okay, so here B will be zero, and n is equal to one means it goes like this. If it is less than one means this diagram, and it's greater than one means this diagram. Okay, so here when B is equal to zero and n is equal to one, it is a Newtonian fluid. And when B is equal to zero and n is less than one, it is a pseudo plastic fluid. And when n is greater than 1 and b is equal to 0, we call that fluid as a dilatant fluid. So these names are very very important. So what are the classification or difference between these fluid also we will be seeing in the next thing. Now just from the graph, uh, identify which are the fluids here. Okay. So now we have, three, we have seen three types and if you go for the above diagram, this three diagram means here b will be not equal to 0. It will have an initial yield shear stress which is equal to some value okay so here when b is not equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 means that fluid will be acting as a bingham plastic fluid and when n is less than 1 it is a thixotrophic fluid and when n is greater than 1 it is a rheofectic fluid okay so these are the six types given here uh, out of which newtonian you can take out other five alone we'll be seeing in detail so here in the base if you have the line like this that is the one d the horizontal line means we call that as a ideal fluid which does not exist so here we have the example for thixotrophic when b is equal to some value so i have taken as yield shear stress no so it is in the axis of y which is tau so tau yield like that we can equate it and when n is less than one it is a thixotrophic examples so these are very very important because these examples and these values they will be asking in the objective questions okay so when this is the case the examples of printers ink paint enamel and lipstick are some of the examples and bingham plastic when b is equal to yield value and n is equal to 1 means it is a bingham plastic example sludge mud toothpaste ketchup and even sewage is also an example then the third case b is equal to 0 and n is less than 1 it is pseudo plastic blood milk pulp rubber polymer are the examples when b is equal to 0 and n is greater than 1 it is dilatant fluid so examples of butter quicksand sugar solution and all and uh, the last one is rheopectic. So here B is equal to tau yield and N is greater than 1 means. Here example is gypsum paste. 
so now we will be seeing those things again in detail so why i have written this again means here some other important points will be seeing okay so here first let us take take that plastic that is bingham plastic when n is equal to 1 and uh, this is neither fluid nor solid case okay and examples are toothpaste ketchup and all we saw no that only and the equation will be like this where n is equal to 1 here here shear stress must reach certain minimum value before the flow commences okay so this is the case for this bingham plastic and if you t if you see the time means it is time independent fluid it does not depends on the time so this is also one important point the next case if you see means it's pseudo plastic which is the time independent this is also a time independent here when the mu value decreases as the rate of shear increases okay so it is a uh, inverse proportional to mu so we call it as a shear thinning also where mu decreases rate of shear increases and the third one is dilatant this is also time independent only here mu increases means rate of shear also increases so we call it as a shear thickening so these points are important this also they'll be asking shear thickening shear thinning and this time independent or dependent so that is also important okay and the fourth one is thixotrophic here mu decreases with time for which shearing force are applied okay it is with respect to time so it is a time dependent and also it is inversely proportional to mu so it is a thinning agent okay so it's a thinning example mud gels and the last one is rheofectic so in rheofectic mu decreases with time for which uh, shearing force is increased so it is sorry shearing force is applied so it is thickening only it is directly proportional and it is a time dependent factor also so out of these five thixotrophic and rheofectic are only time dependent okay and the sixth case is viscoelastic fluid which we call it as a newtonian fluid no so similar to that only it's another name so this is time variant condition but if shear stress changes suddenly it behaves as a elastic material also elastic fluid also so this is all about your types of fluids based on the viscosity that is newtonian and non-newtonian everything it's all based on the viscosity only so these are the types of fluids the next thing we are going to see is the surface tension so surface tension occurs due to the unbalanced cohesive forces acting on different surfaces such as air and water we call it as two fluid interface because air is also a fluid water is also a fluid okay so if you are taking a jar like this and water is filled here a molecule which is present here will be balanced because it exerts forces in all the direction and it is balanced but the molecule present on the top of that surface no so it will not be balanced because the force will be acting downward direction but on the upward it won't be there and here the force will be acting that is your surface tension force so it occurs due to the unbalanced cohesive forces of the water molecule when it comes to two different surfaces so this is what the definition of this surface tension so we denote it as sigma so another is given another one is given that is intensity of molecule attraction per unit length along any line in the surface so with respect to formula they have given so when you see the formula you will be getting thorough so here the formula is given sigma is equal to df by dl or you can write it as f by l also so that is what is given in the definition just we saw before no so it is f by l and we also can write this as w by a or e by a okay so here w or e is nothing but it is the surface energy by surface area is your a so we can use these two formulas f by l or w or e by a two formulas can be used to find the surface tension values and here the unit of this surface tension is joule per meter square so this is also very very important so we know that it's energy by area so energy is it's, uh, expressed in joules and the area is expressed in meter square so it's joule per meter square at the end of that page if you see means uh, another extra point due to this surface tension is given there so if you are following following the notes with the description means just go through that so here the values of surface tension for different cases is given so this is very important because problems will be asked from this okay so here when you take a liquid droplet or air bubble means you will be equating the surface tension force 
and pressure force acting there okay so that derivation and all is not important for us just study this formula alone so when you equate that and when you derivate you will be getting this formula directly okay so for liquid droplet it is sigma that is surface tension is equal to pd by 4 for soap bubble it is pd by 8 and liquid jet it is pd by 2 so here d is the diameter of that particle will be taking note that one and p is the pressure and sigma is the surface tension so in the reverse case also they'll be asking they'll be asking you the surface tension pressure and they'll be giving you the surface tension value so in the reverse also they'll be asking so if that is the case means p will be equal to 4 sigma by d so you have to keep that also in your mind so that's all with your surface tension the next topic we are going to see the next property is capillary rise so we know that capillary rise is due to cohesion or adhesion only cohesion means it is the force exerted by the similar molecules or similar particles adhesion means it is the force experienced by the dissimilar molecule so that is the difference here and here these two points are very important that is wetting liquid and non-wetting liquid so wetting liquid means example water it will be rising that is capillary will be rising so okay capillary may rise and also capillary may fall there is two different cases in water that is wetting liquid capillary will be rising whereas in the mercury that is a non-wetting liquid capillary will be falling so you can see the diagram that is represented here and when this happens means when the cohesion force is less than the addition force this rise will be happening when the addition force is less than the cohesion force fall will be happening so and also this theta value is important that is the angle where the rise and fall happens now so that point they'll be taking the angle theta when it is less than uh, 90 degree usually rise only will be happening and when it is greater than 90 degree uh, this non-wetting type and the fall will be happening so in water is an example for this and mercury is an example for the non-wetting type and we know the degree values also and the formula is important here so here h that is your capillary rise is equal to 2 sigma cos theta by gamma into r so sigma is the surface tension cos theta theta value you have to substitute here and r is the radius of the tube where the capillary is happening if it is in soil means also they'll be giving you the dia of that uh, area and the gamma means it is your specific weight so you can write it as rho g also you can expand it as rho g r also so the r is converted to d in the next formula that is 4 sigma cos theta by gamma d so be clear with these two formulas so theta value for water and mercury is very basic and very important it is 0 for water and 135 degree for mercury so you can see here water is having less than 90 degree and mercury is having greater than 90 degree so this is all about your capillary rise and fall the next topic we are going to see is the vapor pressure so vapor pressure means you can just read the definition first when a liquid is in a closed container small air space a pressure will develop in the space as a result of vapor that is formed by escaping molecules okay so when you keep a water or some liquid in a bowl and when you close it and you provide temperature there will be a pressure will be exerted there okay so this pressure will be increasing and at a point there will be a saturation pressure so that at that saturation pressure only we call it as the vapor pressure okay so when the temperature increases this vapor pressure also increases so that is what given here when equilibrium is reached so that number of molecules leaving the surface is equal to the number of molecules entering vapor is said to be saturated and pressure exerted by vapor on liquid surface is called vapor pressure so when the vapor is saturated the pressure which is existing in that body is called as only vapor pressure okay the mercury will be mostly used in all the equipments because it has its lowest vapor pressure so as we saw this relation now that is when temperature increases vapor pressure increases so here if mercury has lower vapor pressure means it means that the temperature will also be lesser that is the boiling point of this mercury also will be very lesser so this is what they relate with temperature and pressure so normally in our uh, pressure cooker also we cook the food with the pressure no so when you induce the pressure the temperature will be also be increasing more so the pressure increases inside the cooker and also the temperature increases so only the 
food is cooked quickly so this is the simple principle used in the cookers so it's always temperature is 100 degree celsius for a water if you take an example of water means it's 100 degree celsius is that boiling point but with the condition of atmospheric pressure or with the pressure of one bar okay that is the case if the pressure changes means 100 degree celsius is not the boiling point okay so always you have to say 100 degree celsius is the boiling point of water at the condition of atmospheric pressure okay so that is very very important so this is all about your vapor pressure so an addition to this vapor pressure there is an important point that is called cavitation so i have not written that in the notes so just add to your notes if you are listening to the lecture and taking notes means so cavitation means it is the outcome of this vapor pressure only so when the vapor pressure is existing but in some places a low pressure which is lesser than the vapor pressure will be existing so if you take a bowl and water is there and the tube is placed there means in the point in any point of the tube there may be a pressure available which is very less than the vapor pressure if that is the case means what happens means bubbles will be formed in that low pressure area if the bubbles is formed means then cavity will be happening nearer to there and when cavity happens then the water movement or the waves will be very destructive so that it will be affecting the pipe so this is called as cavitation process and it is not good for the material that is pipe material it is not good so you should always be uh, you should always take care of this cavitation not to occur in the pipes the next property we are going to see is the bulk density so here k is equal to normal stress by volumetric strain so this we have already studied in the strength of materials it's dp by minus dv by v so here volume it's reducing so we are putting minus sign here and the unit is newton per meter square so this dv by v can also be written as d rho by rho okay so you can substitute this in this formula also dp by minus d rho by rho so that also you can use so here this point is very important because it's also they have asked several times one bar of pressure is equal to it's nothing but 10 power 5 times the newton per meter square so newton per meter square means it's your pascals okay and the next thing is your compressibility so compressibility is just the inverse of your bulk density that is 1 by k okay so here it is inversely proportional so when k increases compressibility decreases so here the value for water and air i have just given for example for water the k value will be equal to generally 2 into 10 power 9 newton per meter square and for air it is 1 into 10 power 5 newton per meter square okay so here if you see means water is only having the k value more so that it will be lessly compressible and it is incompressible whereas in air if you see means it's having a lower value of k therefore the compressibility will be more so it is inversely proportional and so only we can compress the air in a greater way than the water okay so this is just an example and for liquids k value is high so beta is nearly zero as we saw water has high k value so beta is equal to zero how means if you put k value infinity here what happens to be it becomes zero so beta is nearly equal to zero so liquids are generally incompressible so here the example is given k is infinity means beta will be equal to zero and another important point for this incompressible and compressible with respect to the density is it's d rho by rho if it is less than 5 percentage means it will be it will be definitely incompressible fluid only when the d rho by rho is greater than 5 percentage it will be a compressible fluid okay so this is also another important point regarding this compressibility and uh, with respect to pressure and temperature how it varies means when the pressure increases the k value also increases only both for liquids and gases so when temperature increase sorry pressure increases k value increases if you take the case of temperature means in liquid it is inversely proportional but gas it is directly proportional that is when temperature increases k value of liquid decreases but k value of gas increases so this also you add on to your notes so this is all about your properties of the fluids so with this lecture we complete the properties of the fluids thank you and keep watching for the next lecture on fluid kinematics